a heart that's true. There are such things, a dream for two. There are such things. Welcome to a new edition of the Neon Jazz Interview Series with Chicago-based jazz singer Alyssa Allgood. We covered quite a bit in our interview, like her latest 2021 CD, What Tomorrow Brings, and her life in jazz. She has been described as an impressive, bop-oriented singer by Downbeat and was named Best Jazz Entertainer in the 2019 Chicago Music Awards. She is a vital piece of the Chicago scene and has some grand stories and insights. Enjoy. Hey, thanks for taking a minute out. Of course. Thanks so much. I appreciate it. Absolutely. I guess may- maybe the title of your latest CD is probably the COVID question of all time, What Tomorrow Brings. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, with with that being said, it comes out during a pandemic. Talk to me a mm-hmm. little bit about the timing of this and the, your feelings on this coming out during this very tenuous time on the planet. So I actually um, had planned to record this um, before COVID was even a thing that we'd ever heard of. I was supposed to um, record um, in April, which, of course, the pandemic was already started. So I had to push it back by a few months. Um, but the whole um, kind of uh, planning process had started, um, you know, a year, year and a half before we're out gigging and kind of working through the material. Um, so it was really, to me, not related to this moment and more about my own moment of kind of going through some, you know, personal growth and, and changes and things like that and kind of wanting this album to reflect that. And then, oh, by the way, the whole world was turned upside down. So as we got to record this material and then as I've like listened back through all the mixing and getting ready to release it, um, I think all of the themes speak so well to this moment that we're all in, which is, you know, having to try to find hope and light in moments of darkness to be spending more time um, with ourselves and kind of having that like introspective understanding of, of who we are. Um, and so I'm uh, extremely proud of this album and, and the stories that it tells. And I, I really do think that this will be, there's a song for everybody on there. And I think that the, the moments um, couldn't be more perfect in terms of the, the material. Um, and like I said, I, I just feel very proud to put this out. And I hope that it will help people continue processing this um, really um, extreme moment that we're all in. And speaking of very personal stories that go into this album for the audience, what did you discover about yourself during this quarantine lockdown that, um, you know, during these times of self-reflection as a musician, did you discover anything new about yourself? Yeah, you know, I think at first it was so hard. I mean, like everybody, you know, other musicians and other people who aren't musicians, like having that day was like last March where I just lost every gig that I had booked and kind of like having to feel like my identity was kind of uprooted. I was so used to being on the stage and having those kind of relationships. Um, so part of it at first was trying to figure out who am I without the stage and realizing that, of course, I'm still a, a, this person and I have all these other things. So for me, it's it's been a, a really nice moment and just trying to, I think, have a better understanding um, of myself. And, you know, um, I uh, live alone. So it has also been kind of a thing of just getting comfortable with that, like, solitude. And I don't think solitude always has to be a sad thing, but there's kind of this idea of that. Um, so for me, I've, I've just really learned to um, actually enjoy my own company a little bit more and to just take time for more um, kind of, yeah, self-reflection and, and doing a lot of things um, on my own. What are you hoping that the audience gets ultimately from this experience? When they download and buy this, what do you ultimately hope that they get from this experience? Well, you actually said the word. I really want the listeners to feel hope while they listen to this music. And there is um, kind of some ups and downs on the album in terms of the emotional content. There are certainly some songs that are about um, loss and about sadness. But the underlying theme um, in all of that is really hope. That um, And that also kind of trying to see these moments of struggle or challenge or loss as opportunities for growth that everything that we have in life is an, ex- is an opportunity for us to learn and to grow, and that ultimately there is still all of this light and beauty and hope around us if we can kind of um, continue working through to see that. So are you originally from Chicago? I am. I grew up in the suburbs, but now I'm in the, now I'm in the city. So I've been right in on. this area my whole life. Okay. Well, talk to me a little bit about your upbringing and how, you know, music and jazz became your life. Yeah, so um, as I mentioned, I grew up in the suburbs of Chicago, um, fortunate enough to, you know, have a, a great music program um, going growing up. So I 
you know, started singing with a jazz band when I was in sixth grade. I think I probably had the most swinging version of Satin Doll as a little 12-year-old. Um, but I sort of grew up, um, like, with that music. I also attended um, a vocal jazz camp um, also when I was 12, and I just kind of went back every summer and just really um, enjoyed the music. And I, through that camp, I got to also see live concerts every night. And so I think I just kind of fell in love with the idea of performing and getting to watch people interact with each other and with the audience. You know, I did I did musicals and that whole thing as well, um, and then decided to, um, you know, continue studying um, jazz uh, at the collegiate level. So I had my um, undergrad in jazz performance. And I also am, you know, very lucky to have had, I still have very supportive family um, so my, my parents um, certainly love, you know, jazz and blues. It wasn't necessarily like a home where there'd be like records on all the time or anything like that, but um, both um, really big music lovers and really importantly, really supportive of me um, uh, pursuing music. And so just thinking about like having their help driving places before I could drive and things like that. And then just the constant um, kind of support of, of being a performer has been really, really important. Mm -hmm. And then I, so I went to school uh, in the suburbs of Chicago and then I moved, I've been in the city now for about five years, five or six years, I guess. Um, and I just, uh, I love uh, being here in the city in Chicago. I think it's a really um, supportive community. There's a lot of really incredible musicians and opportunities. Um, and I've been able to, um, you know, perform at uh, the the top club that we have here and work with some incredible musicians and friends, and I feel um, very fortunate to be part of this community. Who were some musical influences? Who did you listen to that really made you, you know, be inspired by the jazz craft? Um, I have this huge mural um, on my wall. It's like three foot by four foot, and it has my, my eight ladies. I'll just talk about a couple of them, but I have been really influenced by... Um, some of the, the real, like, classic singers, um, I think some, um, in particular, I've been really, really influenced by Abby Lincoln. Um, she's somebody who, to me, is not only an incredible musician, but an incredible storyteller and lyricist and sort of life philosopher. So I've, I've really enjoyed um, sort of getting to dig in deeper to the way that she talks about life and talks about love, not only love romantically, but love of self and love of nature and love of sort of humanity. Um, so I just uh, absolutely have been inspired by her. Um, another really um, big inspiration of mine is a, another um, Chicago uh, singer, the great Dinah Washington. And she's somebody who, um, I don't know if people would always classify her as, as a jazz singer because she sang jazz and, and blues and R&B of the time. Um, but she's somebody to me who has this incredibly soulful sound um, that to me feels very Chicago. And um, I really enjoyed just getting to read more about her story. Um, I actually did a tribute concert to Dinah maybe a year and a half ago, um, and actually some of her family attended. So I got to meet her last uh, remaining um, sister who is still alive and some of her grandchildren. And that to me was like such an, an important moment to me because she's an artist that I just have a really deep respect for. And then, I, of course, uh, some other singers as well. But I, those two are so people who really jump out. I've been really into um, Betty Carter as well. Um, I think, again, um, thinking about her not only as a great um, singer, but as a great musician and, and somebody who's writing music, and that's something that I've really been trying to pursue a little bit more as well. So I'm always influenced by artists who wear many hats. What was the first live jazz show you saw that really made you think, man, that's something I'd love to do? Hmm, that's a great question. I know that um, when I was really young, I mean, like this kind of age I was talking about, I heard um, Kurt Elling, I think he was just playing like, somewhere downtown in Chicago is like outside. Um, and I just sort of like, I just remember, I'll always remember like seeing him and just feeling very like taken with what was happening. Um, I've since been able to see him many times at the Green Mill and things like that. Um, but that's probably the first, the first live concert I can remember, um, I think would probably be Kurt Elling. So what about mentors? Who, whose voices have been in your head for all these years as a professional that you've really remembered um, advice they may have given you? Yeah, you know, um, so I studied my, my undergrad uh, at North Central College, which is out uh, in Naperville, it's about an hour from the city, and I studied with um, Janice Borla, and she's someone I actually attended her camp and kind of grew up um, with her um, through that. So I've learned a lot um, from her, especially, you know, she's someone who's very much advocates, advocates for singers being like instruments, and so, you know, feeling comfortable with like scat singing and sort of treating myself as just another member of the band, I really, I think, took a lot of that um, from her. And now coming into the city, I mean, there are so many um, incredible musicians I think of as mentors, but also people that I'm friends with. I think about actually all the musicians who are on uh, this particular project. Um, the bassist, Dennis Carroll, um, who's been a, a really um, great friend and mentor to me. We actually collaborated on a few pieces 
um, for this project. So I have a few lyrics that he put to music. And then uh, George Flutus is on drums and Mike Alamana on guitar. And those two guys as well are people that I, I like look up to. Um, I also, you know, consider them my friends. There are certainly people I go to for, you know, um, just asking questions or kind of getting professional advice and things like that. And there's a lot of other um, people in the city, I think, of just other um, kind of older musicians in town who I, I really look up to and I'm able to ask questions to as well as just sort of like kind of see what they're doing and how they're posting about things and try to use that as a kind of a role model. What do you like the best about being a professional musician when you wake up every day and look forward to what you do? What is it that gets you going? That's probably like a multiple part question. I'll try to be um, precise. I think, you know, my my favorite thing about music um, is the ability to, to connect with other people. I've, for my whole life, I've been a very big people person. I get so much um, joy and energy just from, like, talking to people and being in social situations. And I think um, music is such a beautiful way to connect. And I think that that word connect has a lot of different layers. I'm thinking about the connection that I have with my fellow bandmates when we're on the gig in the moment creating something that will never be created again. I think that's incredibly special. I love the connection that's possible with the audience. Um, and then the connection uh, with myself. I was talking earlier about just like the the stories that are on this particular album, and I think so much of my my role and my my duty as a singer is to is to be a storyteller and is to find and express that that human connection that we all have and are are so desperately missing, I think, in this last year of this pandemic. So that's something that i I absolutely love um, about it. And I also just, um, kind of going with the connection and sort of human aspect of it. I think just the way that music um, can make people feel, the like emotional um, possibilities that we have, I think is is really, really incredibly special. And there are people who connect and can express emotion in different fields. But I think as musicians, we get to do this at this really high level and a really, really beautiful level that I think is just incredibly special. What's the greatest thing about being involved with the jazz scene at Chicago? That's, that's another great question. I think, you know, um, as I mentioned, I think Chicago is a really great community and that, you know, you certainly have people who may be challenging you or you have to work towards things, but it's really a place where I think you have the ability to, to grow and to stretch out and to try some new things. And so I, I feel like I've just been able to, to grow so much, even thinking about like having, you know, regular performances at clubs and being able to just really develop my kind of stage presence or comfort on the microphone and things like that. So I think it's a really um, supportive and, and great place. I think there's a lot of music lovers who are here. The audiences um, are excited about the music. Um, I've had the, the privilege to be back at the Green Mill since it's reopened. And my first gig there, I think, was like two weeks ago, and the audience was just, I mean, like beside themselves. They were so happy and so responsive and just so excited to be in the space with us. Um, and so I think that's a really um, special thing um, about being here. And the thing is, there's just a lot of really, really great musicians here. I think, you know, um, that sh maybe Chicago had always thought of it that way, but there is just so many different kinds of music um, here. You know, I am consider myself kind of, I guess, more like straight ahead, but we have a great scene in that, the great free and kind of experimental scene, a lot of original music that happens here. Um, and just, I think, some really incredible, like high caliber playing musicians as well. So I guess to kind of play off of that notion, what do you ultimately hope all of the musicians and the audience realizes about this long, away, long time away from music? When we get back, what do you hope we get from that long time away from music, live music? Yeah, I think that there will be a renaissance of sorts in that, as I was describing, that the audience, the first live audience that I've had in a club, like, they were just so happy and excited. And so I think that my hope is that people realize how important and how integral live music and music is to life you know and I think that that's something that is a message that um, administrators and all those things need to hear as well because there's a lot of instances right of, of arts getting cut from school programs or very lowly funded and things like that so I think just the um, the kind of respect and the understanding again that, that music music is life and music is a part of this uh, all of our culture regardless if it's jazz or if it's something else so I think just that that kind of understanding that Everybody needs music, and we need music because of the things I was talking about earlier, the emotional expression, the connection, the, the freedom, the um, carefree, all the different kind of things that we, we need as people. And I, I think that that will, will come back um, in, a, in a strong way. So everyone has a perception of you, your family, your friends, your fans, but you're living your life. Who do you think you are? Ooh. Huh. 
how do I answer that? <laughs> yeah, right. That's right. Yeah. This is a good question. You know, I think I, I would describe, as I kind of said earlier, like I really, my whole life I've always been a people person. To, I guess to me means that I, you know, I, I like love being around people and I get that energy. But I'm also someone who I think cares very deeply about the relationships that I have and I care very deeply about who I am in those relationships as well. So I'm always trying to be, you know, thoughtful and supportive of other people, um, you know, constantly working on my own craft, but trying to not always be in my own thing and, and reaching out and, and, you know, checking in on other people and supporting others. So I guess I would describe myself as just a, a people, a people person. <laughs> Perfect. That's a great answer. Alyssa, thank you for opening up about the album and the world we're in and your history and music. Good luck with everything to return. To the thank you so much. Album. Yeah, I appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks for listening and tuning in to another Neon Jazz interview. We'll give you a bit of insight into the finest singers in Chicago, Kansas City, and spots all over the world giving fans all that jazz. Thanks to Alyssa for her time, music, and story. If you want to hear more interviews, go to Famous Interviews with Joe Domino in the iTunes Store. Visit Neon Jazz at YouTube.com. And for everything Neon Jazz all the time, go to the neonjazz.blogspot.com. Until next time. Enjoy the jazz, my friends. You'll reach a star because there are such things. Neon Jazz.